Without further ado, it's, I'd like to introduce UGA's president, Jerry W. Moorhead. President Moorhead became UGA's 22nd president on July 1, 2013. He previously served as UGA's senior vice president for academic affairs and provost, and he did that since 2010. He is the first UGA alumnus to serve as president since Fred Davidson in 1967. Prior to 2010, he served in several key administrative positions, Vice President for Instruction, Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, Associate Provost and the Directors of our Honors Program, Acting Executive Director of Legal Affairs and UGA Faculty Athletics Representative. He also received several university-wide teaching awards and as I look at these <clears throat> as a professor, these really represent excellence that we strive for in the university. The Josiah Meggs Award, which is UGA's highest honor for teaching excellence. The Richard B. Russell Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Education. The Teach of the Year Award in the Terry College of Business. And the Lathor Trepp's Outstanding Honors Professor Award. He's also served as Editor-in-Chief of the American Business Law Journal and has authored several books, book chapters, and articles as he moved his way through academic ranks from assistant professor to Meg's professor of legal studies within the Terry College. President Moorhead was recently appointed to serve on the Committee on Research Intensive Public Universities by the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities and is included in Georgia Trend's 2014 Most Influential List. He's a native of Lakeland, Florida. Most impressively, he is a JD from the University of Georgia, graduating in 1980. He's also served as Assistant U.S. Attorney with the Department of Justice from 1980 to 1986. It is my pleasure and honor to serve as Dean under his leadership. Please join me in recognizing and welcoming President Jerry W. Moorhead. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, Ben. I appreciate that introduction very much. It's great to see so many of my former students here today, uh, all of them who have aged a lot better than I have over the years. Uh, it's uh, very nice to see so many familiar faces in the room today. Uh, I want to begin my comments by just congratulating uh, Dean Ayers on becoming the new Dean of the Terry College of Business. I have every confidence that he is going to move this college uh, to new heights. Um, he's already moved him up six spots in the U.S. news ranking in his first month in, uh, <coughs> in office. So you see, uh, you see what the future holds, uh, holds for him. I have always enjoyed being a part of the Terry College of Business, and uh, it's a great honor to be here today with so many individuals that care uh, as much about the Terry College of Business as I do. I want to spend just a few minutes of your time this morning talking to you about uh, something that I think is very important at the University of Georgia, and that is showing how the University of Georgia, as the land-grant flagship institution in this state, serves this state, and how important the University of Georgia is to the future of this state, just as I believe the state of Georgia is so important to the future of the University of Georgia. And I have said repeatedly uh, in my first year as president that the University of Georgia and the state of Georgia are so intertwined and interconnected. And therefore, what we do to build this state, to move Georgia, and particularly the Atlanta metropolitan area forward is absolutely critical to the future of our own university. UGA will always be Georgia's university and it's my job to protect and strengthen the special relationship that our university has with the citizens of this state and that truly remains at the forefront of everything that I do as president. I believe serving the citizens of the state of Georgia uh, begins by providing our 35,000 students with a world-class educational experience. And I think that we do that. I'm pleased to report, uh, you've probably heard these statistics already, but we have enrolled this past uh, fall, just a few weeks ago, 
the best class in the history of the University of Georgia. A 3.90 high school grade point average for this class, a 1289 SAT average, a 29 ACT average, and we selected this superb group of students from a record-setting class of 21,200 applicants. Many of the best students in that class are already a part of the Terry College of Business because they enrolled as Terry Honors students and received, therefore, early admission through the Honors Program into the Terry College. But I think what's more impressive about uh, these statistics and these students than anything else is uh, when you look at what happens to them over the four years. And we have uh, some seniors with us today. I was visiting with a few of them uh, before this program began. And when you meet our students, uh, you realize that they really are getting a firm education and they are developing into the future leaders, and in this case, the future business leaders of our state and in some cases uh, around the entire world. Uh, for those of you that are following national college issues, issues in higher education, you know that one of the most controversial uh, topics right now is what is your retention rate when you enroll students? And then what is your graduation rate at the end of their experience? And on both of those accounts, the University of Georgia continues to do very well. We're at a 94% retention rate from freshman to sophomore year. And if you look at other major public universities in the country, we are uh, at the leading end of those statistics. Uh, you look at our graduation rate, now up to 83%, a new record. We think it will continue. Uh, to climb each and every year, although it's hard to get that graduation rate too much higher because you always have some students that for personal reasons may choose to transfer at some point to another uh, institution closer to home. But those high rates are in part why the University of Georgia uh, came in again number 20 as a university in the U.S. News and World Report rankings last week of national public research universities. And for us, being in that group of 20, as much as we try to make fun of these ranking services uh, because they're not always uh, entirely accurate on what they measure, but when they put us in the top 20 or they move us up six spots, uh, we think they're more accurate. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I can tell you this, when you look at all of the rankings, you begin to say, all right, there's a trend here because Georgia keeps showing up over and over again as one of the top public universities in the country. And I think as a top public university, uh, we will continue to enroll great students and we will do our best to give those great students uh, a world-class experience. And truly, that turns on the quality of our faculty. Uh, there are many conditions in the environment of a university uh, that contribute to the accomplishments of our students. Uh, but one of the most important, I would say the most important, uh, is outstanding faculty. Outstanding faculty who do a good job in the classroom, who uh, are engaged in cutting edge research, and who serve the people of this state, the people of this country, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, you may have read just a couple of days ago that the Board of Regents for the University System of Georgia just announced all their major awards for the years and the highest honors were bestowed uh, on faculty at the University of Georgia. We were recognized in three major categories uh, including the Teaching Excellence uh, program for our first year Odyssey program at the University of Georgia. And it may be that uh, some of our undergraduate students that are here with us today uh, were the first to experience that first year Odyssey program that began uh, when I was serving as provost of the university. But that program is unusual for a big school like the University of Georgia because we are putting our freshman students into a seminar experience 
with between 15 and 16 students or so in each seminar taught by a tenured or tenure track faculty member at the University of Georgia. Our goal here is to ensure that our students when they arrive at UGA do not get lost, that they get mentored by a professor and that they begin to build those relationships with faculty that will help them when they're juniors and seniors seeking internships or seeking permanent positions or have aspirations for graduate or professional school. These students uh, in our 350 seminars that we're offering uh, this fall, they learn how research improves society's understanding of the most complex issues in the world. Uh, they learn about our commitment to service uh, as an institution. We require our students to go to out-of-class events uh, and they experience uh, lectures, they experience uh, events that will be meaningful to them, maybe expose them to the Georgia Museum of Art that they wouldn't have otherwise uh, perhaps even known about as a freshman student. Uh, and more uh, to the point, every faculty member teaching focuses their seminar on something that relates to their own research. I'm teaching one of those uh, first year odyssey seminars uh, this fall on Monday mornings. Monday mornings tends to be a good time for me as a president to do something like this. And uh, my seminar focuses on current issues in law and we explore a different uh, issue in law uh, each and every week with those uh, 16 students uh, that are in my seminar. I believe those kinds of experiences uh, are really important to our effort to retain students, uh, to challenge students, uh, and to motivate students to move in the right direction. As president, uh, I remain absolutely committed to finding opportunities like those uh, to make sure that our students continue to get a wonderful experience. This fall, we have just launched a new program that the provost, who I hired from Michigan State University last spring, uh, the provost and I announced uh, in the spring. And we've launched this new program with the support and assistance of our athletic association. We now are going to have 250 undergraduate students this year uh, engaged in paid undergraduate research assistantships. Now, you know, all of you think about graduate students having assistantships and working on a team with faculty members, but what we're trying to do and experiment with is the notion that we can give an undergraduate student a sophisticated learning experience by being a part of a research team with a professor, with some other graduate students, and we will pay that student uh, through the support of the Athletic Association uh, to uh, engage in this kind of work. I think those sorts of activities are helping define our students differently than the uh, normal or uh, run-of-the-mill student coming out of another university. So with this project, a student, for example, now can work with David Mustard in the Terry College of Business on a project, and I know uh, we have one of his former students uh, with us today. Uh, they can study the spread of diseases with Susan Sanchez from the College of Veterinary Medicine. They can examine national security issues with an expert like Locke Johnson in the School of Public and International Affairs. We think those kinds of opportunities are going to be very unique for our undergraduate students. And that's just the sort of program that uh, is important for us to continue to push the envelope uh, in maintaining our status as a top 20 public university. In August, we broke ground on a new science learning center at the University of Georgia. This building is going to measure approximately 122,000 square feet and it's going to include 33 state-of-the-art teaching labs and four uh, innovative instructional classrooms. I believe that that structure is going to transform science education at the University of Georgia. And this facility is going to be entirely devoted uh, to teaching undergraduate students 
in the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, math. That's incredibly important at the University of Georgia. And any of you uh, that graduated from Terry 30 years ago, 40 years ago, even 50 years ago, know that we haven't done anything to update our science uh, classrooms or labs during that entire period of time. So this is a major initiative to move our university forward when it comes to science education. Why is that important? Well, at least one report estimates that by 2018, Georgia will have uh, more than 200,000 STEM-related jobs to fill. And so the University of Georgia needs, once again, to be uh, fulfilling an important mission for the state of Georgia. Uh, it's also worth noting that in this superstar class that we just enrolled, 40% of that class uh, have indicated that they intend to major in the sciences. So we think this is an important initiative for the University of Georgia. Uh, the Science Learning Center was the top priority for me in my first year as president of the University of Georgia. I'm very appreciative that the governor uh, supported it, that the system chancellor supported it, the Board of Regents supported it, and ultimately uh, the Georgia General Assembly funded it as a $44.7 million project. You may have read last week uh, that the Board of Regents uh, submitted their request uh, to the governor for the FY16 budget. And I am very pleased uh, that two of the largest uh, projects that the Board of Regents recommended again relate to the University of Georgia. First, the board approved my request to recommend $49 million of state funds for the second phase of the Terry College of Business's learning community. Now, you may recall that phase one of the Terry College project, Corral Hall, has been funded entirely by private support from friends and alumni of Terry. Donors are also providing another $14 million for phase two, bringing them the total support from uh, the state to uh, uh, 49 million will come in from the state to be matched by the 49 million that's been put forward uh, by private support. So this second phase project is actually uh, gonna be a $63 million uh, building project. And we think that phase two is going to once again uh, meet the needs of our students to have innovative business methods and classes. Uh, a stock trading room is included in this project. Uh, class uh, uh, offices uh, for our faculty to get all of our faculty together in the same place. Uh, that's all exciting as we move the Terry College of Business forward with this truly special complex that's coming uh, together. Uh, the board also approved my other major request, which was $17 million from the state uh, to fund the Center for Molecular Medicine, and those funds are going to be matched by $8 million in non-state funds to support that $25 million project. Uh, this Molecular uh, Medicine Center uh, is going to focus on translational uh, glycoscience. It's going to focus on vaccine development, regenerative medicine among other areas to continue to build UGA's prominence in biomedical research. I, I draw your attention to those two projects, which still have a long way to go. They have to be reviewed uh, through the governor's process and then ultimately to the General Assembly. But those two projects are going to improve business education at the University of Georgia and they're going to improve biomedical research uh, for both our students and faculty. And again, that's going to enhance our capacity to serve the state in some key areas. I'm very grateful that we have received this preliminary support, and I hope uh, all of you will pay close attention to those uh, two projects as uh, the fall uh, moves along. Um, I want to turn my comments, if I can, just a moment, to talking to you about how the university uh, also extends uh, our resources 
uh, to create jobs in this state, uh, to develop leaders, and uh, to solve the most pressing problems uh, that we face as a society. Let me start with just a few statistics for you. A 2013 study calculated that the total economic impact on the state from our public service and outreach efforts at the University of Georgia totaled $344 million. Our outreach programs were estimated to generate $35 million in external funding, or about $2.18 for every public dollar we received. That's a very high return on investment that the state is getting from our public service and outreach efforts. In my first month as president of UGA, I established an Office of Economic Development right here in Atlanta in an effort to link our faculty in Athens with economic development activities that are going on uh, here in Atlanta. I had a follow-up meeting uh, on some of our efforts yesterday afternoon with the head of the Metro uh, Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. And we continue uh, with the leadership of Sean McMillan, who runs this one-person office, uh, to build our relationship with Chris Carr at the De Department of Economic Development, as well as all the Chambers of Commerce, trying to provide expertise through our faculty as we attempt to get new businesses to come to Georgia or attempt to advise businesses that want to expand their operations in Georgia. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the Small Business Development Center, which has 17 locations throughout the state of Georgia. That's a UGA operation. And that center has worked with over 4,000 small business owners and uh, entrepreneurs helping to launch more than 330 new businesses uh, and acquire over $78 million in startup capital. Uh, that's a good news story not only for the University of Georgia, but for the state of Georgia. And again, ties back to my initial point about how intertwined the uh, two entities are. Those of you that watched the World Cup this past summer, I have to confess I was not among them, but I, uh, I know that Tiff Grand Bermuda grass, which was uh, something that was made by the researchers at the University of Georgia was used on the soccer fields in Brazil. Uh, again, showing you the scope of the kind of research that's done at the University uh, of Georgia. UGA also is extending its resources to develop the future leaders of this state, many of whom are in this room uh, today. Last year, more than 22,000 government employees and officials attended teaching sessions at the University of Georgia's Carl Vinson Institute of Government. And for more than 85 years, the Carl Vinson Institute has worked with public officials uh, to improve governance, uh, navigate changes in the state's political, economic, and social systems, and to do some strategic planning for the future of this state. Last week, we sponsored at the University of Georgia through our relatively new College of Public Health, the third annual state public health conference. And that brought together over 200 public health professionals uh, looking for ways to improve public health in the state of Georgia. And during that conference, the university announced a new initiative for our uh, uh, great institution. We will be now responsible for engaging community leaders in building a culture of health across the state and uh, training uh, community leaders on how to improve public health in each of their communities. That's the sorts, sort of thing that UGA does. It does it well. A lot of people don't even realize that we're doing it or that we are literally all over the state. I was on a farm tour a few weeks ago in South Georgia, and every community that I went to, there was someone from the University of Georgia that had either impacted uh, the agricultural industry in that community or was in some way serving uh, the farming community through the efforts uh, back in Athens or uh, right there uh, in that uh, particular community. That's what you should expect from a great land-grant institution. Uh, we're compelled to connect our vast resources 
uh, to the citizens and the communities of this state. And I try to think about that issue every day. And what more can UGA be doing uh, to plant itself and to impact positively the future of the state of Georgia? So I'm often asked when I travel around the state, what's next for the University of Georgia? And I always answer it the same way. I think that we're uh, moving forward to reach new heights for our institution, new heights in teaching, in research, and in serving uh, the people. Uh, the coming generation of students are going to demand more from us. Uh, these uh, young people that you've had a chance to meet here today, uh, they're not satisfied with the status quo. And we can't be satisfied with the status quo because if we sit on our laurels, uh, we will decline because everybody else is pushing and they're pushing hard. Uh, I assure you uh, that Texas A&M, which is just behind us in the U.S. News and World Report ranking, uh, is determined to move ahead of us. And their alumni are determined to move ahead of us. And so we have to work hard uh, to maintain the position that we have and to try to push ourselves uh, further uh, by investing in the academic core of our institution. Uh, we all know that the state budget is very different today than it was uh, when many of you went to the University of Georgia. The state uh, has changed in terms of what it can do uh, for the university based upon all the other challenges that the state uh, has. I am pleased to say that uh, the state has been very generous uh, in its support of UGA and if you compare state support for our university versus state support uh, in virtually any other state in the country, we continue to do uh, very well in that regard. But this change uh, in the equation between state support and private support came a little later for us than for some other states. And for that reason, uh, building private support at the University of Georgia has come a little later for us than for other institutions of a similar nature. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do in this area. Uh, I have just hired a new Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations, Kelly Kerner, uh, who uh, arrived on campus this summer. And one of our goals is uh, to substantially increase the private support that the University of Georgia obtains so that we can build more scholarships for our students, so that we can build more endowed professorships uh, for our faculty. One of the goals of our campaign at the University of Georgia uh, is to increase those endowed faculty positions. We currently have 244 <clears throat> as compared to 219 last summer when I became president, but that number uh, truly needs uh, to grow much, much larger. Let me give you an example of why when we're talking about the competitive world. <clears throat> the University of Florida, I hate to mention that name, but they have 380 endowed faculty positions compared to our uh, number. And they have just undertaken a campaign that's focused solely on raising that number to 500 in the next several years. That's very serious competition for the University of Georgia. And I hope all of you in this room uh, do not like to lose to the University of Florida in any way that we measure competition. Uh, you may have read last week that the Terry College uh, received a $2.5 million gift from the estate of Roy Adams Dorsey to establish a distinguished chair in our number one uh, well, I guess they're number three or number four ranked real estate program. Uh, that endowed faculty position uh, is going to be very good as we try to push uh, that department forward to be uh, the number one ranked program. And frankly, we need more gifts of that nature and that magnitude if we are to move the Terry College forward. It's not just about raising money for the Terry building project, although that's critically important. It's also about uh, raising money for the academic programs that support the Terry College of Business. Another area of focus in this uh, capital campaign is going to be on financial aid for our students, especially need-based aid, uh, an area 
that I am very personally committed to. We've got to make sure that the financial barriers uh, to going to college uh, are lessened uh, on our neediest students, and uh, we have to make that an important part of this campaign as well. Even recruiting the best and brightest students, many of whom end up in the Terry College of Business, is a challenge that we've got a long way to go in. Some of you in this room may have come to Georgia because you received something called the Charter Scholarship. And the Charter Scholarship is a basically a $1,000 a year scholarship uh, to go to the University of Georgia. That scholarship amount has not changed in 20 years. And we need to change it because the cost of attending the University of Georgia has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. Those are the sorts of things that are a part of this campaign. We have to do more to support our students and our families financially if we want to remain competitive in recruiting these very, very good students. Um, I'd also like to see more internships in the Atlanta area for our students. And I know that's a, a priority that the dean shares as well. But one of the things that we want to explore is how we can link our undergraduate students more to the business community in Atlanta so that when they graduate, uh, they have had some real practical experience in the business world. And I think, again, that's a way that we keep Terry competitive, we keep our students competitive. I welcome your support for any of these goals or for all of these goals, uh, if you're so inclined. But now more than ever, I think the University of Georgia is thriving. I think the Terry College of Business is thriving. It's doing well because we have loyal support from alumni and friends. It will do even better in the future if we can expand our level of support in both areas. It's great to be a Georgia Bulldog, and I thank all of you for the opportunity to come here today uh, and speak to you. Thanks so much.